Warning, this video is intended for adult collectors. It contains plastic collectibles, questionable opinions, and the foremost common rider decade apologist. Do not panic. This is just a random review. Before we begin, thank you very much to Unknown Hand for joining the Patreon campaign over at patreon.com forward slash TJ Omega. Thank you very much for pitching in. And thank you to everyone who does. You're the reason I can keep going. You're the reason that this still happens. And you've been the reason I've been able to keep it up for almost a year. We've got a few days to go before we hit that mark, but oh, oh my god. As someone who used to like panic at doing Toy Sember and doing you know like one a daily video for a month, I never could have imagined being able to do it for a year. But it's you guys who keep me going, you guys who have driven me this far, and I thank you all for it. So let's keep it going. Today we are looking at another from Wave 2 Legacy. It is Elena 1. Very hotly anticipated for me because I like any time we get a new female Transformer that's not RC and doesn't look like she's entirely a shell former. So, how did it turn out? Well, as you can see, we have this interesting mix of red-pink car going on here. And the car itself, an interesting mix. As I bring it in a little bit closer so you can see. The designers at Hasbro wanted a sports car for Elita 1, but for whatever reason, Takara decided, no, we want it closer to like a dune buggy type vehicle. I assume to differentiate it from just your standard Autobot cars or your RCs. So what we got is this kind of hybrid between the two. It's very like, very curved, almost like a uh, dune buggy would be. Where it does, but it does, does still have some traditional sports car tropes like the spoiler in the back and the, the rounded dome here. Um, it gets me more thinking like almost like a futuristic concept car from the 80s and 90s. And if you're designing something Cybertronian esque for Elita One based on you know her one appearance in the cartoon, that's probably not far off. So credit to uh, credit to Hasbro and Takara. I think they came up with a happy middle ground that makes her unique. As we see, and as I said, it's an interesting mix. Pri the red is the primary color going on here, but we get a little bit of pink breaking it up here along the hood and the sides, a little bit in the front too. The front is actually pretty well painted. Bumper, headlights, and grill all done up in pink or white to separate them out. Looking really good. Uh, I like when little details are remembered. White wall tires. Uh, so that, that's a little bit more classic. Nothing going on in the rear. The rear section has a lot of Transformers lately. Just kind of uh, just kind of there. You know, it gets technically the back of the car. So they're not too focused in on it. But yeah, the vehicle looks nice. And it looks unique. Which is a big plus for it. Let's see. Ah. No, I can't roll. The one thing about this, I can't demonstrate rolling on a glass surface. I have to figure out that. But, yeah, I'll go ahead and take her weaponry off her. She comes with two translucent rifles. You can see, if you want to arm her, she is loaded for it. We have points here, here, and here that can accommodate a 5mm peg. And if we want another one, we can take off the cap at the top and reveal one more if you want something a little bit more centralized. I like this little cap, by the way. So, for reference, we only have a few examples of what Elita 1's vehicle mode looked like in G1. All we really got was that the top of her head was still visible in the vehicle mode, uh, right behind the windshield. Which always made me thought uh, Cybertron Override would have made a perfect choice to be like a quick repaint into like a Cybertronian Elita 1. And never really saw that, even with a brand new mold out. Uh, but we got it here, and they included that little detail. So it's about the one thing we can actually say is accurate from the G1 vehicle mode, because that's really all that exists of it. So yeah, vehicle mode, nice and unique looking. So we can get this into the robot mode. We can see how much that uniqueness continues. For starters, I'm going to flip the feet out here and... Uh, oh! Florida is happening outside. You'll apologize. Florida happens at this time of year a lot. All right, so I'm going to unclip this section here and fold out. That is going to form the legs. 
see. So we can separate them out. You can pull them apart, but I prefer to slide uh, the clip out. Then once that's done, we can connect everything up and shore up the legs a little bit here. And then fold these sections from the top in. All right, and that's going to give a little bit more of a solid look, a little bit more stability. All right, going up to the arms. You can see she is just kind of there in her vehicle mode. Really, only the legs do any like real transforming, and the rest is just connecting panels to each, to each other. But I'll tell you this: it does it a little bit better than your average uh, female transformer. Go ahead and pull the arms forward to unclip them from the roof. All that can now hinge. I'm going to go ahead and straighten up the arms to twist. Originally, I transformed this toy for the first time without instructions. And when I got to the vehicle mode, nothing lined up properly. This is one of those where if you leave even small details mistransformed, it throws the entire thing off. So when you're going to the vehicle mode, make sure the arms face this direction. So that way the flat side of the fist is pointing outward from the vehicle. And man, it's coming down hard. All right, so you get a little bit of rain ambiance today in today's review. Uh, just a little bit of calming ASMR along with all this. All right, rotate the waist 180 degrees. Now we got to deal with the backpack. All right, so how we deal with the backpack. So rear section folds up like that. There is a spot, there is a tab and a slot for that to clip into. It doesn't clip in too firmly on mine, but it'll stay put if I really need it to. The front sections are on these double hinges. Go ahead and rotate them like so. Try to try get them into a position, position where it's not flexing the plastic. Fold all that down here. It's not going to tab in per se. It's not going to be like a hard connection, but it's all frictioned enough to where it's going to stay in place. So that's going to be the backpack, and that is going to be Elita 1 in robot mode. So she does still use quite a bit of shell in order to accommodate her vehicle mode, but I feel like she is definitely a step forward in trying to get more of her vehicle mode as part of her real robot mode. She does do a lot more transforming than either of the last RC molds, so that is a big credit to her. And I feel like she wears it better. You know, as we look at here in her proportions, lower legs nice and solid, forearms nice and bulky. She's definitely carrying a lot more bulk and mass to her than your standard RC. And yes, Thunder, I get it. I get it. I agree with you. Whatever you're saying, I agree with you. Just don't kill the power. So, toy itself looking quite nice. We look at the back side here. You can see how much of that backpack uh, weighs on her. But honestly, you look at Studio Series Transformers and you're going to see backpacks across the board, especially at the deluxe size, as bad or worse than that. For what it is, it folds up nicely. I like how the, the, the actual like fender sections and front wheels accommodate, like actually add to a robot mode rather than just hanging off of her back. I think it works. You know, it's a considerably better job than a lot of female Autobots and Transformers tend to be. So I'm going to give it full credit for that, All right? And we can see like the legs all kind of came together nicely. So it definitely works. It can be done. You know, there's still a little bit of room to work. I feel like this still could have been even cleaner and use a little bit more of that vehicle in her robot mode. I would have liked if like some of that front section became her chest, but I will take what we got because this is a lot closer than we've gotten in a while. So. In this mode, we've got a lot more white taking over this color scheme, and the pink and the red have kind of mellowed out. We've also added in something of a maroon color as well. So she's hitting about every shade of pink that you could possibly get here. So it is, again, Hasbro not wanting to make an overly pink character, because, you know, Elena One was very much a pink female character. But I do like the mix here. I do like it. Take in a closer look. She does have that G1 head to her that is exceptionally unique because it was never designed to be a toy in the first place. So it doesn't look quite like a lot of Transformers, but that's a good thing. 
she stands out a little bit. Autobot insignia right there in the middle. Very small, but you can see it. I do like this like visor effect at the top. You know, this a little bit of silver and a little bit of green painted on to give her that look. It's a unique little piece for that forehead crest. A lot of little attention given there. There's also a lot of intricate paint going on in the midsection there. There's like a lot of uh, extra lines going through her that I feel like would normally be muddied out, but they actually went a little bit further here and made it work. I like it. Red for the pelvis, and then no paint to the legs, but like we said, we got multiple shades of reds and pinks going on here to give her plenty of distinction and plenty of uh, space to break her up. So she's looking really good. She is looking really good. All right. So I guess we go to articulation. Yeah, I'm trying to speed through this if you can't tell. Like, this doesn't have to be like a super complex, hey, look at every single iteration, every single piece of this toy. Like, you can see it. You can see the sculpting is done pretty well. You can see the tech greeble through her forearms. You don't have, you don't need me to point it out to you every single time. You know, I want to keep this down to just opinion. My opinion here is the articulation on Elite One is pretty good. Head does ball joint all the way around, so full motion. A uh, little bit of a uh, little bit of play back and forward, but doesn't really like to stay. Universal shoulders. These shoulder pieces behind can get in the way of some positions, but not many of them. Uh, you are you can move them out of the way as needed, or you can uh, fold them back down to another position where they're a lot uh, neater. And uh, and then if you when once you get Minerva, that's going to give you the option to make her a little bit distinct from Elite One as well. But for now, yeah, shoulder articulation is great. Bicep is 360. Elbow is a little bit above 90 degree. Full uh, wrist rotation as well. Waist rotation works as well. Uh, you can get the kibble out of the way if you need it to go a little bit further. Hips are completely unhindered thanks to the shape of her midsection. Thigh swivel works well. 90 degree knee. Here's the issue I have with her. So in order to transform this that clips pretty hard at that hinge, which means that you really can't give her a proper ankle tilt. It's like that, that's the lowest degree she's capable of uh, before it snaps back into position, which is unfortunate because it means she's not quite as stable as she would be otherwise. Uh, so the posing, posing on her can be a little bit trickier, especially thanks to the fact that her feet are nice and rounded. You have options, of course. I mean, she has the three millimeter post in the back of her pelvis, just like a lot of Transformers do these days. And because of her transformation, I forgot to point this out, she does have two five millimeter pegs in the bottom of her feet. If you want to find some way of using that as a display stand option, uh, you can also use that in the vehicle mode for booster effects. If you want to her see her going uh, super fast, which I think is a nice little touch. She can be posed that way. Like you can tilt the ankles, it's just going to be a very wide-legged pose. And yeah, it's going to be a little precarious, and you can see on mine, uh, it doesn't really like to stay that way. So that's a that's the downside to how she is engineered. You can work around it, but you shouldn't have to. And after that, I guess we reintroduce her weaponry. Fits nicely into her hands. The weapons themselves are actually pretty modular. You can see on this rifle, you have a 5mm peg on the side and two more uh, that go all the way through. So you have six connection points all together. And then on this one, you have not only the handle itself, but also two more 5mm pegs on the sides. So that Energon weapon and that intermixing that you're able to do across certain legacy figures is really coming through on Elite One. They really want you to be able to play around and combine her weaponry. That's that's great. That's great. As for one of those little hidden, we didn't announce it kind of gimmicks, that's good. So, I believe that is all I really have to say about Elite One. Let's see if I can uh, see if I can put her rear section down again so you can see. If you want a little bit more compact, you can do that too. We'll, fi we'll finish off like that as if, uh, j just so you have the, uh, the visual. It does make her, a l does shift her balance a little bit when you do that. It does make her a little bit back heavier, so you have to compensate in the posing. So that's about the 
That's about the only flaw to that particular version. So, that's everything about Legacy Elite One. She definitely stands out, and she's definitely a step in the right direction to getting female Transformers to feel more like fully-fledged transforming figures. She doesn't rely on shell-forming shell nearly as much as RC does. That said, she does come with her own issues. The backpack can be heavy if you put it in this configuration, and because of those ankle tilts not really functioning, she is tricky to pose, uh, especially in this configuration. You can still do it. You just have to be a little bit more careful and a little bit more patient. But that's really about the only bad thing I can say. I do really like the figure. I think she stands out. She is definitely unique amongst Transformers. And like I said, she is the beginning of what we need. More female Transformers that aren't scared of using the vehicle bulk to make their robot mode mass. So she's definitely winning on that front. Thank you very much uh, if you find her. I'd say she's worth the risk, or if not, maybe wait for a sale. You know, um, it depends on your tastes. But I hope this was informative. Hope you learned something. And I will see you next time. Guys, I am facing the most powerful enemy any YouTuber can face, the algorithm, and I need your help to defeat him. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Every time you do, we attack that algorithm and we drive it back until it can no longer defeat this channel. Thank you very much.